okay just a quickie sorry for the kind of jaunty angle I think it works kind of quite well I've been doing a bit of decorating here, as you can probably uh, tell sprucing things up a bit I just want to talk about the, the video I released today the Moriarty Thunderfoot thing a lot of this conversation has focused around the 80-20 in physics so this being Professor Philip Moriarty's work he's a professor at the University of Nottingham and I believe that he's in charge of the, in of the undergraduate intake he's taking on people who have generally just done their A-levels uh, for undergraduate physics courses and what he finds is found year on year is that the split is about 80% male, 20% female. And that does seem quite a big difference, doesn't it? And so it's quite understandable that he or anybody else would look at those figures and think that's quite an extreme figure. There's no way that a figure that extreme could be accounted for by uh, biological predispositions, genetic predispositions. Because what's it trying to say? It's not as if surely men are not four times more interested in physics than girls, or, or even that slightly less extreme than that which is obviously wrong um, and doesn't even fit with the figures but you, what you might think is is that four times uh, as many boys are interested in physics than girls but really that isn't how it works because in many ways the way that people take on courses in the United Kingdom they take on one course just one subject right that is the norm you can do a combined honours but it's generally just one subject Okay, so it functions very much like a first past the post system. And we all understand how first past the post systems, they grossly exaggerate the differences uh, in voting uh, behaviour. Such that, let me give you the example of the 1997 election when Tony Major had a 179 seat majority. And these were the figures. His party, the Labour Party, attracted 43% of the votes. I've punched the numbers here. The Conservatives attracted 31% of the votes, 43% versus 31% but in terms of seats the Labour Party got 63% of the seats and the Conservatives got 27% of the seats so from a naive perspective you could look at him out with his 63% with his, uh, of the seats with his 418 seats and the Conservatives with their 165% of the seats and think that the whole country was overwhelmingly voting Labour when in actual fact it was 43% versus 31%. And I have to suggest that exactly the same thing is true here. That this is grossly exaggerating the difference in interest whether it's, uh, whether it's cultural or whether it's innate and predisposition involved it's grossly exaggerating the difference between the interest boys have in physics and the interest that girls have in physics because after all all that means is you only effectively choose the subject that is your most favorite subject so it could be that for a significant number of boys there's physics right and then the next subject the subject that closest with physics is just below physics so what do they choose just physics right this subject never ends up on the statistics at all whereas for girls their interest in physics might be only fractionally below that but there's just another subject perhaps biology because a greater number of, of girls choose biology than boys choose biology right biology or some other subject might be just above it and so in actual fact the difference in interest is very small but it ends up looking very very big so the number ends up looking a lot more sinister than it is and when you look at that great big sinister number you think well there's no way there's no way that genetic predisposition there's no way that innate factors could account for such a huge difference but if it only takes a very very small difference to push physics down into second place uh, for a significant number of people then it doesn't take a very big genetic component to make that kind of a difference that being said I accept when you look at a level choices and GCSE choices the cultural there are certainly I'm sure of it cultural factors that are at play with regard to that but again this is another reason why we need to be very very careful before we start setting targets because almost certainly the targets that we set are going to be wrong you imagine my friends you imagine if I gave you the results of a first past the post system in terms of the numbers of seats that had been assigned without you knowing anything about the particular constituencies and then told you to tell me what the percentage were that voted for each party pretty much anything that you guessed is likely to be wrong and if it wasn't wrong it would simply be a lucky guess and that is the same thing here as long as people are being enabled to make the choices that they want 
and they're making the choices I don't think we should be too worried about the balance that results of it at the moment I think probably we are steering boys and girls into paths in a slightly different way and maybe we do need to open up their horizons a bit and make, and make them think less about male subjects and female subjects absolutely but even if we do that my suggestion is it would only take a slight biological predisposition, a slight innate predisposition, genetic predisposition, that could make quite a large difference in outcome when it comes to the number of people taking those subjects. Well, that was all I wanted to add to it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.